Hey everybody, David Emily here. I uh, shaved off some of my facial hair, left a mustache. Don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not, um, so this may be a special video. This may be the only time you see me like this. Um, but you're not here to look at my facial hair. You're here to do some programming. Um, specifically, you're here to probably watch uh, Harvard's um, runoff. Um, so kind of cool problem. I know, uh, I think Maine may have this kind of voting style. Um, but instead of voting this, you like rank your candidate. And then based on that rank, we go through and be like, oh, you voted for, or you have Alice as number one. Alice is not going to win. Um, so let's look at your second rank and see who wins out of that. Um, so really cool. Um, I kind of like this problem. Uh, it's a little bit trickier. I think the hardest part of this problem is you end up working with this uh, preference array. Um, so I kind of modeled this off the ballots because I think that makes it easier to see. As they use preferences and voter rank, um, I like to think of this voter as specifically this ballot. So ballot zero is then going to rank these. They say one through three. Uh, we're programmers, so we know this is uh, zero through two because all good rays start at zero. So ballot zero has Alice ranked at zero, Bob at one, and Charlie at two. And then we're going to go through all these ballots and fill up this preferences array. And I feel like this is the hardest part because you may not be used to working with like two-dimensional arrays at this point. Um, no big deal. We're going to go over it. We're all going to work through this together. Um, so when you pull this down, uh, it gives you four methods. I know it gives you more than that. Uh, like six functions that you have to fill out. So we've got vote, tabulate, print winner, find a min, is tie, and eliminate. Um, they also include the code that you can go over. Um, it's kind of useful. I'm going to use it for names because I want the names to match what's going on with the rest of the code. But you don't really need to do that because... Um, these functions tell you exactly what's going on. Um, so let's start off with vote, and uh, let's just work our way down. So vote says record preference if vote is valid. Um, so the idea being here, I think we did this on the last homework, but they're going to pass in uh, what ballot this is, or voter, um, voter ballot, uh, how that ballot or voter ranked this person, and then their name. Um, so we're going to do this in a couple steps. We're, one, going to make sure that that name is inside the candidates listing. And then if they are, we're they're going to mark that on the appropriate preferences list. Um, so first things first, uh, let's start by going through the candidates. Um, so the thing here is we have this name. I think we have a candidate. Yeah, okay. So we're given an array of candidates. Um, goes up to max candidates, which is nine. And then we have uh, preferences. Um, so, and then we also have these global um, variables to use. So I'm actually going to take candidates and we're going to come back for that candidate count. So we're going to iterate through this list of candidates. Uh, so int i equals zero. i is less than, less than, this is going to be the candidates count. Um, and we're just going to iterate through all of them. I can't type today. And we're just going to say if um, string compare the candidates i dot name, because we want to look, we're going through the candidates array, um, which in turn is this structure, the candidate, and we want to check the name off that. Um, so we're going to go through each candidate in the candidates and check the name against what's passed in. Um, we know from previous use or for just from the CS50 man page that string compares a zero if those arrays are the same. So we're gonna pass those in and make sure that zero. Um, and then we're also going to make sure to include the string.h library. Um, I went ahead and included this before because it's a super handy library. Um, so if we get here, if this if statement turns out to be true, that means the candidate is a proper candidate. And we just want to update the preferences. I'm actually going to copy and paste that um, name also. Make sure I get it right and I don't have to hunt down um, spelling mistakes. Um, so we want to make sure that that voter or ballot has that rank um, as that candidate. 
Um, here we can put I because we are finding where in this candidate's array that name matches. Um, luckily we can assume that there's no duplicate names or this would be a lot trickier. But if that name matches in that candidate's array, that means that candidate is reference on that ballot, that rank that's being passed in. Um, so we can say that. And that's all we have to do with this function because we're iterating on um, each one separately. So we can just return true. And then if this if never fires, nothing ever gets set true. So we're going to return false. Um, so one cool thing I like about this one is you can do all these functions um, separately. I generated an error. Candidate count declared there. Oh, I put candidates count. Okay. Um, which means you can develop each method or function separately and then um, test them separately. So it's super cool. Um, so if I make runoff, uh, hey, it passed. Um, let me go down to this test thing. We had it copied. Um, this should just make sure that um, our thing did right. Um, so uploading. I got really hooked on these bangs. Um, I only really like the pina colada flavor, though. I hope that doesn't mean I'm like an alcoholic or something. <laughs> I don't know. I just really like the, uh, I don't like pineapple, but I really like it in that drink. Um, we're already passing stuff in this time print winner. Um, but let's scroll up. So we passed everything on the boat function. Heck yeah. So we're done with the boat function. Um, let's go down here to tabulate. And I think tabulate's probably the hardest function in here. Um, but it's tabulating the votes for non-eliminated candidates. So here's where we're going to iterate over all these ballots. Um, so this drawing, uh, this one did Alice, this one also did Alice. If Alice is eliminated, we now want to iterate through and count them as for Bob instead of Alice because Bob is the next ranked one. So we're just tab tabulating their votes. Um, uh, so now we have to start keeping track of which candidates are still in the race and which ones have been eliminated. Um, so we're going to do that by up here on this uh, structure, this candidate structure. We have this bool eliminated. Um, so when the candidate is eliminated, we're going to mark that as true. And then we're going to test against that pretty much every time we work on that candidate. Because once they're eliminated, we don't, we don't care about them um, at all. Sorry, that, that sucks. Computer science, like programming, uh, do not care about feelings at all. Um, <laughs> uh, so tabulate, we are going to iterate over the voters, um, and then we're going to find out on the ranking who's who, and then just count that up. Um, so first thing first, we want to iterate over the voters, um, because that's going to be our ballot. Well, what I like to think is ballot. So we have this voter count. So we're gonna iterate over this. And then we're also gonna iterate over the person they have. So the reason I'm doing this is we wanna iterate over this voter and then find the first rank here that is not eliminated and give them a vote. Um, so we're gonna use this outer loop to go over the first dimension of this array. And then the second loop is going to go over the second one. Um, so this one's going over the outside. And then we're just going to make a second one. Um, this is going to go over the inside. And we know this is going to go up to candidates count. Because you can't have more, in this case, you can't have more um, candidates than the max amount of candidates. Um, so now that we're inside this two-dimensional array, uh, we just want to check to make sure that for, um, if this candidate listed, so, uh, candidate index, inside this preferences array at this area, um, so I'm going to grab this preferences out, um, so what I'm doing here is we're iterating through this preferences array 
and I'm going to get each candidate out of here, the specific one in this ballot, and then I'm going to match on that candidate. So I'm going to grab this name from here, um, let's say Alice, and then I'm going to compare this value with what that is in the candidate array so that I'm looking at this structure. So matching here where they rank the things, referencing it up against the structure of that specific candidate, that way I can check this eliminated. Um, so it's kind of like if you get into databases later, it's going to be kind of joining. We're just checking to see where they are here so we can match them on here because this preferences has no idea what a candidate is. Um, it doesn't know anything about this structure. Um, so we just got to grab that candidate off of there so that way we can look at the actual structure. Um, and kind of how I mentioned before, if they're already eliminated, we don't want to um, calculate their votes. Um, so if they're eliminated, so now we're actually matching on that specific candidate. Um, if they're eliminated, or if they're not eliminated, sorry, if they are eliminated, we don't want to count their votes. If they're not eliminated, we want to count their votes. If that's the case, uh, votes plus plus. Um, and then here, we're just going to break. Um, so what this is going to do is now it's iterating through the ballots. The first time we, if we're going over this first ballot, we're going to see Alice. Where they're going to compare that Alice to Alice in the candidates so we can get the stuff off the structure. If eliminated on Alice is false, that means Alice is still in the race, so we want to give Alice a vote here. Um, likewise, if Alice is not in the race, we no longer want to give her a vote, and instead we want to hop down to the second rank and see Bob and give Bob a vote. And then once we've done that, we're done with this first ballot, and we're going to hop down to the second ballot. So that's that break. This break gets us out of this inner for loop and bumps us out to the outer for loop. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's all we need on this month. Um, let's find out. Let's um, save remake. I use candidate count instead of candidates again. Um, I keep doing that mistake. Save it. Uh, remake. Cool. Pass. Um, let me check that again. I really think this that method is the hardest to visualize. Um, just iterating over two dimensional arrays is just something you uh, you know you got to get used to, um, which is good because the more you use it, the faster you'll get used to it. Um, come up here, tabulate all test pass sweep. Move on to the next one. Um, print winner. So print winner of the election if this is one. So I think this is going to be us um, going through. We're going to find um, who isn't eliminated or who has the majority vote. So we're going to find the... Um, we're going to like divide the votes by half, find that, and then compare everybody who has more votes and if any of them have more votes than half, we're going to declare them the winner. And you can't, two people can't have more than half because that's not how math works. <laughs> um, uh, so let's do that. Um, so first we have to find out um, what the half, what the majority is. And since we're doing division and ints will truncate that and we want to be more specific, um, I'm going to use a float here. Um, I think you could use an int. Um, I'm just going to use a float. Uh, feel free to test that out. Um, so we're going to have the majority. And here we're just going to have um, voter count uh, divided by 2. Because the majority of votes is uh, more than half of the voters. And then uh, we just want to go through the uh, candidates again, like how we've been doing this entire time. Um, I'm going to try not to put candidates this time. I'm trying to put candidate. Uh, candidate count. Iterate this. So if that candidate, candidates, 
candidates, candidates, I, um, if their votes is greater than the majority, uh, they win. So if that's the case, I then want to print candidates, I, I want to print their name, um, so print F. I'm having so much trouble talk or typing this time. Uh, percent S because it's a string, uh, new line. So print their name. And then we can just return false if there's no winners. Um, we can also return here. How does this work? I think we need to return true. Um, let's see, votes. All true. If one print winner, if one break. Okay, so we return true if that does happen. Um, so if there's a winner, come up here, we print their name, and we turn true. So since this is an integer on the structure and majority is a float, uh, you have to typecast uh, the votes as majority. So all the voters, find out half of them. If any candidates have more than that vote, uh, they're the winner. Return true. Um, so I think that's it. Let's run this. Make run off. I really wish here in this like description they said um, majority. Like you get that from the problem. Uh, but maybe more descriptive stuff would be nice. So print winner one, uh, print false when leader has exactly 50% of the vote because we want greater than 50. And that's where the floats come in. Um, okay, we're on to the next one, man. We are flying through this. That's what I'm talking about. So find minimum. Return the minimum number of votes if any candidate has. So we're going to um, iterate through the candidates and just return the lowest one. Um, we know the max amount of voters in here is stored in this max voters. You can't have any more votes than the max. Um, so I'm going to kind of take that and I'm just going to say um, int min vote equals that. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is so when we iterate through this, I can just do a simple compare. Like if any candidate has less than the min vote, we're going to reassign the min vote. So I just set it as the maximum amount of votes possible. I don't have to worry about that. Um, so that, we're gonna iterate in this time. We're gonna iterate over the candidates again. <laughs> uh, so same thing, candidate, candidate count. Uh, iterate this. Um, if candidate um, of I, if that candidate in the candidates array, um, is less than min vote. We want to assign min vote to that candidate's vote. We can copy and paste this. Um, and then additionally, we don't want to count the votes of people no longer in the race. Um, so if they're no longer eligible, we don't want to count their votes. Um, so I'm going to take copy this from earlier. And I'm actually going to add this before because uh, logically, if any of them are eliminated, we don't want to count their votes. So it doesn't make sense to spend the time counting their votes if they're eliminated. Um, so if eliminated equals false and candidate votes is less than min vote, we want to count them. Uh, else return zero. Um, I don't think that's true. I think we want to return min vote. Um, we'll know real quick if <laughs> the min vote's the maximum amount of votes. Um, so same thing. Let's run it. Candidate count declared here. Did I do that again? Candidate index. Oh, this doesn't want that, know what that is because I copied and pasted it from another method. Uh, warnings against copy and pasting a lot. Um, it catches up to you. Uh, runoff, candidate count, what do you want? 
Uh, yes. Um, that is what I want. Thank you. Thank you, CS50 IDE. That is what I want. Uh, once again, I made it, uh, so now I'm just going to see if the test over this thing passed. I think we did something similar to this in the other homeworks, so hopefully that one's pretty um, familiar with you all. Okay, fine min, all tests pass. Excellent, excellent. On to the next one. Return true if election is tied between all candidates. Um, we're passing in the min. <laughs> um, basically, we just want to make sure no more than one candidate has tied or if all candidates have tied. Um, we don't have to worry about this. Um, we're going to get that min value and we're just going to check if every candidate has min value, that means there's a tie. Likewise, um, kind of reverse of that logic, um, that means if a single candidate does not have the minimum amount of votes, that there is not a tie. Uh, so you can do it either way. I'm going to do um, search each candidate's votes, and if I find one that doesn't equal minimum, I'm going to uh, return false, because that means there was not a tie. Uh, you can also just iterate through and make sure that they all have it. Um, uh, for int, yeah, we've been doing this a lot. I'm actually just gonna um, copy how we did this up earlier because I apparently can't stop making spelling mistakes. Iterate through the candidates. If the candidates I dot votes does not equal min, return false else return true. So if any of these candidates did not get the minimum amount of vote that we found, it's not a tie because we have at least one candidate that scored more than the minimum. If they all have the minimum amount of votes, it is a tie because they all have the same amount of votes. No spelling mistakes. Oh, that's going to grade it. Um, I feel pretty good about that one, so I'm just going to hop down to the next one. Be really awkward if I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, eliminate the candidate in last place. So if you got minimum, uh, you're in last place and you're getting kicked out. So, um, so we've been doing this a lot so far. Uh, this is going to be kind of the inverse of this is a tie. Actually, let me make sure. Oh shoot! Uh, if tie detects tie after some candidates have eliminated, is tie did not return true. Oh no. Um, does not equal, oh, I need to check. I need to check to make sure that they're eliminated or that they're not eliminated first. Um, because if they are eliminated, they're all gonna have zero votes. So we're not gonna count them. Uh, let's try that again. See, that's what I get for trying to rush ahead. Should just slow down. Um, so if the candidate is still in the race, then we wanna count their votes. And if any of them do not have the minimum amount of votes, we know that not all the candidates tied. Some of them actually make sure this one passes before I go on. Um, okay, is tie is tie passed? Cool. Uh, so eliminate eliminate the candidates or candidates in the last pass place. This is going to be we're pretty much the same logic as tie. Um, they're passing in the minimum. If any of those candidates have the minimum vote, we want to mark them as eliminated. Um, so pretty much the same as earlier, so I'm just going to copy paste this logic and modify it. So if candidates votes equals the minimum, we then want to set them as eliminated. And I don't want to return there because it's possible that more than one candidate have um, the lowest amount of votes. Cool. Um, so let me make this again.
waiting for results. Drum roll. Hey! Uh, so we passed all the tests. There we go. Uh, we just did runoff. We just uh, perfected probably one of the cooler theories in uh, democracy that I see. Um, I think Maine's doing it. I'd like to see other states do it. That's not important. This is no political talk. This is coding talk. Um, and you just completed runoff. Um, so heck yeah, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, cool problem, cool idea. Uh, I like where Harvard uh, CS50 is going. Um, and I like you, so I hope you come back. Uh, until next time, I probably won't have a mustache. Uh, see you